Hey guys, Chase Jarvis rightly points out that the best camera is the one you have with you. And no one can deny the importance that uh, smartphones and camera phones have played in photography in the last five years. Arguably more shots have been taken on your iPhones and equivalent phones out there than actual cameras because everyone has one in their pocket. So for photographers like you and me, having one that has a decent camera becomes important. So today I wanna to compare three of the heavyweights. We've got the brand new iPhone 5, the iPhone 4, and this weird Liberace looking thing, the Nokia Lumia 920. They all have high resolution cameras. They all have a pretty good reputation for their photographic abilities. And if you, to be honest, if you're taking stuff just to put on Facebook, they're all gonna be fine. But let's put them under a bit more scrutiny and actually look at them at full res. Now, it's worth noting that these are seriously big phones. They're not like the Samsung Galaxy Note, but they're certainly big boys. The 4 is a 3.5 inch screen, the 5 is a 4 inch screen, and the Nokia is 4.5 inch screen. Now, in terms of the brightness, both the 4 and the 5 iPhones have an 800 to 1 contrast ratio, and the Nokia Lumia in testing has tested over a 1000 to 1 contrast ratio, so incredibly bright. Running through some of the specs of the actual cameras, the iPhone 4 has five megapixels. You can see there a single LED flash, which is really close to the actual lens of the camera. It's apparently got an f-stop of 2.8, but that I couldn't get that from Apple. That was just a review I read. And a field of view of 30 millimeters. Whereas the iPhone 5 is eight megapixel also has a single LED flash, but it's further away, you can see. It's faster with an aperture of 2.2, and it adds things like face detection and panorama in the camera. The Nokia is a big leap forward. It's 8.7 megapixel. You can see it's got dual flashes there. It's using a Zeiss lens, which is optically stabilized. It's f2. Uh, it'll focus down to 8 centimeters. It's got a 26 millimeter field of view, and the flash has a stated range of up to 3 meters, which is really good for a camera phone. But once you get into the menus is when these really separate out. You can see the 4 only offers you a grid or HDR, the 5 adds panorama, whereas the Nokia has so many different shooting modes, scene modes, ISO options, as well as custom white balance settings. You can also change your exposure compensation, which is so important. I'll demonstrate that one later. A whole bunch of different features you can change there, and you can go online to buy what they call different lenses, which is basically, you know, adding Instagram type effects. But the white balance and the exposure compensation are already huge additions to this, and it's got a different aspect ratio you can choose. Now I have to be clear, this is not a phone review. I'm just comparing the camera capabilities. I'm not advocating Apple or Windows. These are just some of the front runners in the market at the moment that I have access to. If there's interest, I'll do more comparisons. But I wanna do, a, I'll do a shot here of the harbor. I'll do a shot indoors and I'll do a test shooting at people using the flash to compare how well the fill flash works. Then we'll get them all on the computer and look at them at full res and see how they actually compare to each other. Okay, so first up with the Lumia, let's get a shot of this beautiful vista. We'll wait for the ferry to go. Beautiful day for a ferry ride. If you ever come to Sydney, jump on a ferry. It's a free harbour cruise. Well, three or four bucks instead of taking a chartered one. And if you go after dark, you can sneak on a cheeky bottle of champagne. So let's get a shot of this. And this isn't my phone, so let's try not to drop it in the water. And I'm focusing on the bridge on each of these. So I'll just get a couple of shots. This is a noticeably wider angle lens than the iPhones. Really nice, punchy, highly saturated image there. And you'll note that's quite wide angle. That was on the wide angle setting. Next up on the iPhone. And as I said, of course, there are different apps out there that you can modify uh, the way that, you know, have different cameras, but we're just using the standard one that's built in. And I'm not using the digital zoom on these. That's just eating into your image quality. So we're gonna be taking these all at wider setting. Quite a different color cast on that one. Bit of a finger slipping in in the top left hand corner too. And finally the iPhone 5. And that one's a little bit off level, but it's closer in saturation and color to the Nokia. And these are all straight from the phone. 
really miss the fact that this one doesn't have exposure compensation. Bit stupid. But let's take a look at them all one after the other. These are all cropped in now to 100%. So you can see there, it's not fantastic detail, but at a long distance shot, that's not bad on the Nokia. There we are on the iPhone 4, really different colors coming out of that, and it was all at standard settings. And then finally with the iPhone 5, definitely not as much contrast as we had in the Nokia. Let's just see the Nokia again. Yeah, much punchier. Now let's get some more test shots. Here's three comparable shots taken of the same setup on a desk, all with flash on. There the four is nice and punchy. The five comes out a little bit lighter and there's a bit of a cooler color to it. Whereas the Nokia, it's much more neutral. It's not as punchy as the outdoor landscape was. So it's not just a oversaturation on everything. Next up, let's demonstrate why exposure compensation is so important. That speaker and stand should be almost black. There on the iPhone 4, it's trying to bring it back to a neutral gray, so it's too bright. The 5 isn't as bad, but it's still overexposed. And here we are with the Nokia with no exposure comp on. But then by going in and dropping it a couple of stops, we can get it to look right. And this is a big plus in the Nokia's favor. Next up, I got an unflattering angle on my buddy Eric, who is sitting in dappled light without and then with the flash to see how effective they were at fill flash. Here we are, first of all, on the Nokia. There it is with none, and that's the downside to having exposure comp. If you accidentally leave it on, they stay like that. But there with flash, it's not a huge difference, but of all three, that's actually the best result. Here we are with the iPhone 5, very different color cast without flash, and then there we are with flash. Not a big difference at all, really. It's having trouble to overpower that. And then finally, shooting away with the iPhone 4. There we are without fill flash, and there it is with the flash on. Now let's do a high ISO test. For this next series of tests, I went to an underground basement that takes some glamorous shots of garbage cans with a sign in the background so we can see how clear the text is. There we are on the iPhone 4. There with the 5, it's noticeably brighter. I didn't change anything or my shooting position. That's just how the two different cameras meted. And there we are with the Nokia Lumia. Now it's up close, so we're really going to see the details. So let's go in for 100% crop from the center. There on the iPhone 4, that's the textbook definition of grainy as bloody hell. You can see the grain everywhere, but there is still detail retained. When we look at the iPhone 5, nowhere near as grainy, but it's just smooshed the crap out of the details. It's like they've got their noise reduction turned up to 11 or 12. Whereas the Nokia Lumia, clear winner in this test. It's a lot crisper. It does have a slight green color cast to it, but... The fantastic thing about that one, you do have white balance control, so you could correct that if you wanted to. So look, having gone through and tested these and looked at them at full screen and done full crops and really gone in and I've, you know, I took more sample photos than I've presented here, whilst iPhoneography has taken the world by storm and rightly so it's being validated as a legitimate form of photography, it may need to be renamed Lumiaography. Lumiaography, does that make sense? because the, the Nokia Lumia uh, 920 Pure Vision camera is blowing the iPhone 4 and 5 out of the water. I'd be really interested to compare it to the Samsung ones, the Android system, because they offer a similar level of controls and I found good results using my old Note. So I will get a hold of that if there's sufficient interest and do a comparison to the Nokia and the iPhone 5 as well. Leave me any questions or comments. If you're using one of these phones, leave us some feedback. Or if you use a custom app that gives you more controls that you're getting good results with, fire away and let us know about those as well. Thanks guys, and thanks for watching the 100th video on photo news and reviews. Please like, share, sub at thatnikonguy.com, and I'll see you soon with loads more news and reviews. Whilst you're here, check out the Take Control of the Light workshop series. Click here to check out my 1000th video over at That Nikon Guy. Next up is my general advice on upgrading your camera equipment. Next up is my thoughts on photography as a creative lie. Next up is rules of photography, what they are and whether or not you should follow them. Here's a link to my how to shoot a wedding playlist, one of the most popular things I have up on YouTube. Next up is a link to my The Business of Photography, all different tips and techniques for running a photography business. Here's a video on storytelling I made with Tina Yong. And finally, here's a video on how to get sharp shots at slow shutter speeds.
Thanks everyone. Please subscribe. I'll see you soon.